you may have noticed a bit of a trend recently with many of our tutorials talking about LAB color mode. There's no question that can be attributed to large part to a book by Dan Margulis, we've heard us mention before, the lab color book. Mostly because this is a mode that's been around for a while, but this his book kind of prompted many of us to kind of explore it a little further. I'm going to look at one method with this photo. Here's a photo I took. I was at my parents' home in Canada a while back. You can see the snow. I, it took me a while to remember what that was, but uh, this guy was staring right at the camera. I couldn't help but to take the picture. It was a kind of a gray day, but he was much more colorful than this. It just didn't, he looked much more kind of reddishy orange, so I wanted to try and get that color back. So one of the techniques I thought I might try is something we actually talk about in our uh, Photoshop CS2 Power Tour, one of our one-day seminars, which is this command called Apply Image. But Apply Image, by nature, often doesn't really give us very th much. You know, uh, you can try playing often. This, this comes in looking like this in multiply mode, but if anything, it doesn't seem to really be helping. So, one of the things that we decided to try would be to do this in LAB mode. So first of all, I'm going to duplicate the background layer, first of all, so I can show you the before and after, but also so it gives me, of course, more options. And now we're going to change the mode to LAB color and don't flatten, because I still want to have the like, two layers. Now check it out when I go to apply image. All of a sudden, because we're in uh, LAB mode, look at the difference. Now even this is what it probably would look like initially. It would be in lab mode multiply at 100%. That's the way it would probably come in looking. Not that much of an improvement. However, if I change to overlay mode, look at the before and after. Whoops, there's the original. Here's now. That's a little better, but it still wasn't quite. He looked more like, how about the lightness? What? No, definitely not. A special effect maybe, but not for this. Here's the A. Here's B. I feel like an automatrist. A or B, which is better? Here's A. And here's B. I think B is closer, but it's a little too intense. So I'm going to not have an opacity of 1,000%. <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Slip of the keyboard. So let's pull that opacity. I'm just using the scrubby slider kind of method to pull it a little closer to what I want. Let's look at the before and now. Definitely closer. Uh, still a little bit intense, so I'll maybe just pull the opacity back a little bit. And more importantly, perhaps, if I show you, here's the original photo. Here's now. Mr. Squirrel is looking just the way I want, but the areas in the background, of course, are also being affected. So I could simply add a layer mask. Just take my regular old paintbrush here. Get back to kind of normal. And basically, in the areas that I don't want to be affected, I can just go in here and mask those. So really, all it's going to do is make a big brush. It is only affect the squirrel. I'm going to move my layers palette. actually just collapse it here so I can... Make sure I'm getting all these areas like this. Looking pretty good. Now let's bring our layers palette back and check out the difference. Original, not too bad. Now, I like it a whole lot better. Okay, and that's simply a matter of taking advantage of LAB mode and apply image. Try it for yourself, won't you? I think you'll like it.